And the last one, it's about doubt. And doubt is the baseline for the ego. It's the only thing that makes the ego um, so powerful in your life. It's doubt. It's the foundation of the I am not a should be. So it's, it's, um, it's, it's, yeah. In meditation, when we talk about doubt, it's, it's the question, am I doing it right? You know, is this the right way to do it? Should I do it differently? Is there something that's better? The constant seeking has a foundation in doubt. Um, in our life, then doubt is a mood of the mind. It's, um, like I said, the foundation for the ego. It's a mood of the mind and it's directly connected with trust. You only have doubt because you don't trust. So um, all of you out there that are seeking and trying to find different ways to become awake and um, different ways to understand non-duality, that the seeking that you have has a foundation in doubt and and lack of trust. Um, and, and the issue with doubt is that because it's ego-driven, then it's tied into the I am not a should be, which means that it's tied into you will never ever get it. You will never ever be content. No matter what you have doubts about, something, a, a speech you're gonna do or a interview you're going to or a date you're going on or whatever, you might have a lot of doubt about yourself in it. If everything goes well, then it doesn't matter because you're going to find something else to be doubtful about, to have doubts about, because it's the foundation of the ego. The ego is never, ever content, ever, ever. It can't be content. It's not part of the ego. Um, so it turns from feelings into emotions and it ends up shaping our personality. Um, because as soon as something goes from a feeling into an emotion, you, you, um, you have the, 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 what do you call it? You have the, the neurochemical picture that is going along with the emotion and that is creating your personality on a chemical level. Um, so it's also a feeling like hopelessness, you know, this would never ever work for me. I, I can never ever do that. It's, it's one of the things that I really, really enjoy about about reading the suttas, about Buddhism, about reading the Dharma. It is that it's repeated over and over and over again that, that enlightenment and becoming awake, it's also for you, you know? It is possible. I mean, the Buddha could do it, so you can do it. What is the difference? And I really enjoy that because it's, it's, it's taking all the doubt that you can have in yourself and going like, no, I can't do that. I'm not there yet. It's, it's, not, it's not for me. I can't do that. And, and it's taking all that and packing it away and going like, of course you can. Of course you can. Why should you be so special that you can't? You know, Why, what, what is so unique about you that you can't come awake? Of course you can. Um, so every time you hear yourself say, no, I no, I can't do that, or I couldn't do that, or um, that would never work for me. I really would like to meditate more, but that would never work for me. That is doubt. It's not you, it's ego. It's not you at all. You're not present at all. You're limiting yourself with identifying into something that has a foundation in doubt. And, and that limitation is not you. It's just ego trying to tell you who you are, what you can do and what you can't do. You can always ask yourself, whenever you're limiting yourself in any way, you can always ask yourself, how do you know? How do you know I can't do it? How can you be absolutely sure that I can't do it? How do you know? Because the ego is, is limiting you in, in a lot of different ways and trying to keep you away from, from you, you know, blasting through the glass ceiling and just becoming you. Um, because then the ego ceases to exist. So obviously the ego has uh, a lot on <laughs> um, a lot invested in you not becoming awake. Um, so those are like the, the the very big parts of doubt, but doubt also exists on a on a very subtle uh, plane. The, the the common denominator is is a physical sensation of unease. 
So you might have you might have a sense of you that something is not right, and you can't figure out which of the which of the hindrances it is. That there's something present in you, and you can't find out what it is. Then it's probably doubt. There's something in you that wants to go in a direction, but you you are not sure about it. So you hold yourself back. That's doubt. Uh, whenever we have that physical sensation of unease, it's normally doubt. There's something in you that is holding you back from from where you're where you're supposed to go, what you're supposed to do, um, and what you really feel that you really really want to do. You really you are like every part of your all, all your cells, every part of your being is like singing towards you know doing this, and you're not. You're holding yourself back. And that's because of doubt. It's also, I have written down some words, it's uncertainty, hesitation, indecision, confusion, insecurity, and mistrust. And those are the more subtle planes of doubt where we just call them, give them another name, and then we pretend that it's not about doubt, but it is. But it's also hidden into an anxiety, depression, and fear. Um, if you if you boil it down, if you really really pick it apart, you can see that that an anxiety, depression, and fear is about doubt. That there's a foundation of doubt, and there's a um, a little hint of doubt uh, about you in it. Um, so, doubt is the most common occurring ego mood that we have, and it's it's keeping us in a distance to to where we're supposed to be, to who you're supposed to be, to you flourishing, um, to you becoming awake, and it's keeping you tied into the I am not a should be mentality. Um, and that makes doubt, like I showed you on the picture previously, where it's kind of like the baseline for the ego, that's doubt. <clears throat> 